The, the American Invasion Force faced a lot of health-related problems um, during the expeditions. Uh, General Arnold's force uh, faced starvation, um, communicable diseases, uh, but one of the big problems facing the forces, particularly as they were besieging the city of Quebec, uh, the biggest problem was probably smallpox. And it tore through the force and tore through the camp. Um, at a certain point in 1776, for example, uh, 2,000 of the 8,000 men were incapacitated due to smallpox. I mean, that's an incredible figure. Um, so that had a really big impact on the success of the invasion overall. In comparison to that, the British forces, um, they were probably better off. They, had, um, they did have access to food, they were warmer because they were sheltered in the city, um, so not the same kind of exposure. Um, and a lot of the, uh, the men in the British Army had been exposed to diseases like smallpox before. And that gets to a bigger problem um, that we see generally at the beginning of the war, where we see probably communicable, communicable diseases being more of a problem within the American Army as opposed to the British Army. A lot of the British soldiers um, had come from bigger cities, so they'd been exposed to smallpox and to measles um, and to various other crowd diseases as they're known. Whereas at the beginning of the war, what we see with the American forces is a lot of people coming from relatively remote areas, coming together in these military forces, in these units, and all of a sudden contracting these diseases. And that, that's why we see these big outbreaks, such as the smallpox outbreak, um, in the American forces just outside Quebec. So it has a major impact. Um, another example, if we turn away from the invasion, just look more generally at the American war effort, um, at Valley Forge, high incidents of typhus and dysentery. Um, and one of the problems there was, as I was mentioning before, it hadn't been exposed to these kind of diseases. But the other thing was that this was a relatively new military force. So they didn't have the same kind of hygiene and sanitation regulations that the British did, and the British had been doing this for years. Um, so they had rules about where you should locate your privies. You know, they shouldn't be close to water supplies, which seems common sense to us now, but wasn't necessarily at the time. So what we find then, say, at Valley Forge, these high numbers of soldiers contracting and dying from diseases like typhus and dysentery because they had you know, animal carcasses and privies located right next door to their drinking water. Watch you know, all the, the transmission of diseases, you know, not surprising conditions like that. And it takes General Washington and some of his subordinates to really take a firm hand and implement regulations to protect men, to mitigate against these diseases. Um, in 1777, General Washington ordered the widespread inoculation of the soldiers in the Continental Army, and that makes a huge difference. Because it had got to the point, um, just to return to Quebec, it had got to the point where men were so scared of contracting smallpox that they started to inoculate themselves. So they were injecting smallpox pus under their fingernails. And the commanding officers were against this because these were not controlled conditions. So they would get the disease in perhaps a, a, you know, a minor form, but it would spread then to the other soldiers who hadn't been inoculated. Um, so they're, you know, they're suffering already, they're trying to do their own inoculations, and it's a massive problem. So we do see as the war progresses then, there are more regulations in place, and it's hard to quantify the improvement of health in the American forces, but I would say overall that certainly as the war progressed, they did get a handle on these sort of crowd diseases. And overall, by the end of the war, probably we're seeing uh, kind of relative, relatively the same health between the two opposing armies.